Just because you're in a quarantine doesn't mean that life has to end. Do things, make it exciting, make your life worth living. Hey guys, welcome, welcome, another fun video. Please subscribe. You know, you're stuck in quarantine, what else is there to do? And you know, when I started uh, everything, I was like, I'm gonna be so motivated. This is the time for me to do the spring cleaning projects that I've never done. This is the time to organize. This is the time for this, this. That motivation lasted probably three days. And then I went into this cycle of like pseudo depression, not wanting to do anything with little spurts of excitement and let's do this, let's do that, and then back to nothing again. So what can I say? Everyone's quarantine is different. There is no right and wrong. If the best thing for you is to just sleep all day and try to get through the day, that's valid. If for you it's organizing and doing something exciting, learning a new skill, education, blah, 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 that's perfectly fine too. This is an unprecedented worldwide event. And uh, you know, we're all just trying to make it through. So I thought I would read this fun article that I read online on Curbed about 21 easy home projects to tackle while you're hunkered down. So, let's get it started. First one is, try a new furniture layout. Um, honestly, I think it's a great idea. Move your furniture around, even change the lights. You never really know. Something could just be shifted into a different area and it totally changes the energy. And energy aside, you get used to how you live. It becomes familiar. You know, you kind of become like, I don't know, not cognizant of what is around you. So if you change something, even just one slight thing, it'll be some subconsciously noticeable and it'll just give you uh, another reason to wake up every day. I honestly think it's a great idea. Next thing, bring out the special occasion dinnerware. You know that dinnerware that you have hanging out in your cabinets and it's all beautifully on display and you never use it? I don't understand what's the point of that. For people that have invested in fine china, or even if it's not fine china, but just, you know, a nice set from somewhere, why don't you use it? Don't save it for Thanksgiving, Christmas, or special occasions. We're literally locked in. We have nothing to look at, nothing to do. So bring out the beautiful silverware, beautiful china. Bring out your fancy plates, you know. Have fun with it. Why not have like themed dinners, you know, dress up, make it be like a different theme. We are in the 20s again, which was quite a very va va voom decadent time. So why not have a great Gatsby decadent dinner? Restyle your bookshelves. Okay, I really love this idea because most of the time, let's be honest, bookshelves are dust collectors and most of the time you don't really do anything with them, but there's so much you can do for one. How about color organizing them, making it in rainbow formation or others, or maybe neutral colors on one shelf, bright colors on another. And how about get rid of all the books? You don't need all the books there, but why don't some books and then some fun trinket, uh, trinkets, trinkets. Um, things that you may have collected on trips or unique little collectibles, pictures, you know, like change the format of the bookshelf. It doesn't just have to be straight across if you don't want it to. Um, and that'll just make it more interesting and fun. So yeah, restyle your bookshelf. I definitely agree with that. Clean your vents and baseboards. Okay, honestly, I don't do this and I probably should because, you know, allergens and everything in the air, but definitely a good idea. This article recommends cleaning it from time to time and it can increase the efficiency of your air conditioning, vacuum the vents, um, works for me. Um, just a good habit for everyone to do and it probably only takes a few seconds to do. Go under your bed. Okay, obviously for more than one reason. First of all, who knows what you have under your bed? You may find some amazing treasure. Second of all, on the inverse, you may find something totally embarrassing. Third of all, you may find something that disgusts you. And lastly, it's probably good to clean under there because, uh, you know, cue to the one above, you wanna have like allergen free, dust free. So yeah, definitely a good idea to consider checking under the bed. You'll never know what you may find. Clean out your bathroom drawers. Okay, I'm definitely guilty of this. I tried to do this recently and I'm literally finding like shops, shops. I don't know what is going on. I can't talk today. Soaps and conditioners and random creams and stuff that's like 
almost 10 years old and it's like wow this has literally sat here and I've done nothing with it and a lot of the stuff I can't use and the stuff that I can it's like my goodness all this money that I spent buying it thinking I didn't have it when in actuality it was there so yeah clean out your bathroom drawers and cabinets you may also find some surprises as well all right <sighs> organizing that's a difficult one tackle the closet so this is what I was most excited for to do when the quarantine and pandemic started is I thought, you know, I've completely forgot about spring cleaning for who knows how many years. Um, and I'm like, this is the perfect time to go through the closets and closet. And, you know, I did it for a bit and I got all excited about all the progress and then I stopped. And it's now a sty again. And it's, you know, it's just difficult. I'm just not a person that's naturally um, attuned to cleaning or structure. I guess I thrive in chaos, so um, that has definitely been difficult. However, the weird thing is, um, and it's kind of masochistic of me to not acknowledge it, is the fact that when I actually do muster up the nerve to do some cleaning and organizing, I feel great after. It feels nice to walk by something that looks so clean and organized. It can even close. You can walk by it. Um, but then the masochist in me just forgets and little by little I add more and more clutter until I look at this mountain I'm like, oh my god, when did this come to be? So, tackle the closets. They recommend start by taking everything out, purge what's no longer used, and you've heard the thing where they say if you haven't worn it in a year, if you haven't worn it in five years, all good. I mean, just take a realistic approach. Even if it's something cool that you've wanted to save, are you really going to wear something that you wore 10 years ago? And even at that, even it, it truly is and it doesn't fit you, then, you know, put it in storage. It doesn't need to be in a primary place in your closet just taking up dead space. Um, but definitely purge what's no longer used. Clean the interior. If it's closed primarily, they suggest to sort by category and... Put your most used items front and center while seasonal or rarely used things can go towards the back. That's fair. Next thing, tidy up the entryway. Whether you have a spacious mudroom or a tiny coat stand, things accumulate in your daily life. Reevaluate your hooks. Are they helpful? Hanging at the right height? Do you need more or fewer? Vacuum or shake out your doormats. Then get rid of any knickknacks or unused items. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely a good idea. If you think about it, it's kind of could be the dirtiest place in your home because you're coming in from the outside. So again, take a look at your coat closet if you have one. You may have stuff in there that you have no purpose for. Do you really need that many coats? Do you really need those random things that you have in there? I mean, who knows? Take a look at it. It might be worth um, going through it, throwing it out, donating it, purging it, as they may say. Label your supplies. I feel like we're now going into Khloe Kardashian territory, but let's see. A few labels can go a long way in creating a more organized house. Have storage bins or containers in your kitchen pantry, under the bed, or in a linen closet. A label maker works great, but if you don't, regular paper and tape. I mean, that's a cool, that's a cool idea. Um, I feel though that most people know that like Windex or something, what that's used for and whatnot, but Maybe if you like have all your cleaning stuff in like a box or maybe you like clothes from your closet you want to keep just kind of like label what it may be. Um, but you know, watching the Khloe Kardashian video, it definitely explains um, what organizing can look like. And I mean, it's beautiful. Um, maybe one day I'll eventually live like that. So the next section, it says pay attention to your walls. Walls may not be the first thing you think of when it comes to home projects, but a few updates can make a big difference. So first thing they say is straighten or redo your wall hangings. How many times do you go into someone's place or even in your own and if they have like a TV or art or posters and whatever and they're crooked, you know, it's kind of like annoying to the eye. So yeah, that's definitely a good idea. Um, clean it off. Um, straighten it out. From photos to artwork to TVs, the intent, the items on our walls become crooked over time. 
Take a stroll through your house and straighten everything. You'll be surprised at the difference. Alternatively, take down all of your photos or artwork and make a new gallery, perhaps moving things to a new room to keep things fresh. You know, like I recommended earlier, you put something up, it's cool, you liked where it was, and then it, does it have to stay there forever? And why does it have to stay there forever? Why don't you move it to a new place, you know, new energy, new vibes, makes you, it's like, oh, look, this is here now. Um, obviously easier said than done for like paintings and art and pictures, TVs are more difficult um, because they tend to be large and there's not much space, but you know, start with the art, whatever it may be. Move it to a different space or like invert the pieces, move them around and who knows, maybe everything will feel completely different. It'll definitely look different. Um, next thing, touch up your paint. Many of us have a few cans of paint tucked away in our homes. Make sure it matches your current walls and walk through the house and touch up the high use areas, especially door frames, baseboards, and doors. You know, honestly, I think it's a great idea. I really wish that I still had some leftover paint from where I live because, you know, if you think about it, the doors, they're kind of extremely dirty because I don't know how if everyone uses like the handle to go in and out, but for me, if the door is like slightly ajar, then I just like hold um, and push on the door frame and you know hands are dirty so over time you definitely can see um, markings on your door or even like where light switches are if you've ever looked around the light switch that the walls tend to be dirty because you know your hands your fingers they like touch everything they touch the wall and then it gets dirty so it's definitely cool to do little touch-ups here and there um, definitely uh, if you have paintings and pictures and you use nails to put them in the wall, there's holes. So it's definitely a good idea also to have like maybe a small like spackle kit and uh, fix those holes up so you don't have just like holes in your wall. Um, yeah, put empty frames to use. Photo projects require a ton of time and energy to complete, which means they sometimes never make it. Go through the house and add photos to any frames you're not using. Alternatively, you could swap out older photos for new ones. Okay, I'm gonna be honest. I don't know how many people just have frames laying around with nothing in them. At least I know for me and the people that I know, if we have frames that are empty, they tend to be like in a drawer somewhere. Um, but that being said, it's definitely a good idea. Um, add new pictures something current something that's exciting for you and or and fill the frames if they're empty i mean why do you have the frame if there's nothing in it and if you don't have anything to put in it then it shouldn't be on display um just something to think about and then as far as the frames themselves maybe you can change them up and have some fun with it you know spray paint it paint it a different color you never know it's just a very cheap and easy fix and you know if they're like special frames and you don't want to do anything you could always go to the local flea market or thrift store and they sell really nice ornate frames or whatever modern whatever you're looking for for like nothing and you can play around with them before you want to use it on your nicer frames that you have at home but definitely a nice touch um what do they suggest next replacing light bulbs honestly it's this is like one of the most simplest things but everyone tends to overlook it um you know a light bulb goes out and if it's not a primary light or if it's like a chandelier type fixture with many different light bulbs people tend to you know just forget about it um i've definitely been guilty of it but the the funny thing is and it goes back to that like weird masochistic point of view is the light bulbs are dead for a long time and you do nothing but when you actually go about doing it and replacing it and you notice the more light and everything, it's like, wow, this is great. So the question asks, why not do something about it the minute you notice? I don't have the answer. I guess it's maybe the procrastinator in me that doesn't do it right when it happens, but I appreciate it when I actually do do it. So go figure. Next thing, clean your lamps. Sometimes the culprit to bad lighting isn't a light bulb, it's dirt. Unplug lamps and clean the lampshades with a dry microfiber cloth or vacuum cleaner. Yeah, that's a good idea. I don't think I've ever cleaned lamps before, but I've definitely noticed that they can get dusty. And the one thing I will say is interesting, so a family member of mine, they've, they've had one of those like random crystal chandeliers with like the drop things, and I've cleaned it before and I've noticed like, it already looks sparkly enough as is, but when I dust the crystal parts and then turn on the light, it's like you're staring into the sun. So dust, um, 
dust is definitely something we all have to deal with. Clean your curtains. Again, something I don't do. I'm looking at mine right now. I've probably never cleaned them before, which I guess is disgusting when you think about it. And who knows, maybe it can add to allergies, but let's see what they say. Clean curtains can make a room feel brighter. Most drapery stores advise cleaning your curtains a few times a year. Eek. First, look at your care instructions to determine whether you can wash them or whether they have to be dry cleaned. Um, I'm not gonna go that far. Um, well, at least with the ones that I have, I can't just take them down easily. I live in a place with tall ceilings, so like, I don't even know how I would go about getting them down, but I think good old vacuuming or shaking them out could do um, enough for you to be able to clean them up and make them look good. And definitely with like a long vacuum attachment, just going up and down, or if you have like the valances or whatever, um, that can be good too. Next thing, moisturize your wooden cutting boards. So I'm someone that doesn't even use my kitchen the way it's supposed to. I haven't gone as far as putting sweaters in my stove. Shout out to Sex and the City fans. Um, but I don't use a wooden cutting board or any for that matter the way I should. If anything, I use a plate. Um, remember that gorgeous wooden cutting board that you use as a cheese and charcuterie plate? When was the last time you moisturized it? In order to prevent warping or cracking, both wood and cutting boards and spoons should be oiled about once per month. Start by cleaning your boards and letting them dry. Then apply a food grade oil like mineral oil or beeswax and let it soak overnight. Um, I guess you learned something new. I had absolutely no idea. I take it this probably could be uh, used towards wooden furniture as well. But to be honest, a lot of the wooden cutting boards that I've seen at people's houses that look like they've been there forever, I doubt people are moisturizing them and they seem to work just fine. But you know, quarantine something to do. Take stock of the essentials. Clean out your liquor cabinet and or spice shelf and figure out what you have and what you might be missing. There's no way to know if you have three bottles of cumin or a few versions of liquor until you take stock. Yeah, that's definitely a good idea. I feel like with the alcohol, I don't know people that have such extensive bars that they aren't aware of what they have. If anything, it's more of like the mixers and like the little extras that they may have too much of. But as far as like the spices, definitely a good idea. I can't tell you how many times I've looked into my cabinets or if I was over somewhere and I'm like, my God, how many nutmegs do you need? Or like, what, like what is going on here? And you know, it's so quick to forget you have it and then you just happen to be in the supermarket and you're like, I'm gonna get this and this and this and that. And you know, save your money, honey, especially if you have it. Plus it's gonna open up more space in your cabinets for more. Clean your small appliances. Most of us probably clean out the refrigerator and wipe down the stove on a regular basis. Okay, but small appliances are often neglected. Hand wash all of the removable parts of your coffee maker and run a few brewing cycles with distilled water. Girl, that's a lot of work. Empty out your toaster oven or toaster trap door and then shake the appliance over the sink to remove loose crumbs. Deep clean your instant pot by wiping down the inner cooking chamber with a damp dishcloth, washing the silicone ceiling ring in hot soapy water and running a cycle of water distilled white vinegar and a few lemon peels to remove odors. Oh my God, that's a lot. Um, yeah, I think that's definitely a good idea for the people that have appliances like that and need to do it. Um, I don't really use appliances that much, but you know, for the people that use the tea kettles or pots and pans, yeah, you should probably clean the stuff. And as far as the refrigerator, um, I guess it should be cleaned once a month, news to me. Um, but uh, yeah, a nice project to do during quarantine. Next, clean up from winter. If you have a small patio or balcony, grab a broom and sweep off the dirt and dust off a few, dust off the past few months. Larger yards will need a bigger cleanup. Start by getting rid of any leaves and pine cones that may have fallen during winter storms or storms, prune away dead or damaged branches. Now is also the time to clean up around your 
perennial plants or shrubs and remove damaged grasses for spring seeding. So this article was written in April, which um, I guess it tends to be the time when like gardeners like clean out their gardens and then prepare to mulch them in anticipation of planting flowers in spring. I mean, obviously if you live in a city, you most likely do not have this. So, you know, just a good old brooming here and there. Prep your planters. Um, grab your empty planters, big and small, and clean them so they are ready for planting. Discard any that may have broken and check the drainage holes. So again, I feel like this is more targeted towards like outside, the people that have like planters around their house or backyards. But honestly, if you live on the inside, working with your plants is a perfect opportunity. You know, I, I believe I read somewhere that it said like every few years, it's good to repot your plants, um, indoor plants. Um, you can look for roots coming out of the drainage holes or whatnot. Um, or if you don't have it every few years, I think it may be every two years, they would recommend and go like one inch up in diameter of the pot. Um, now's a really great time for that because what the hell else are we supposed to do? And your plants will be happy, they'll flourish more, and who doesn't like having a living organism in the house? This is an example. This is one of my, I believe this is like a neon pothos and I'm growing it right now. You can see the roots are getting so big and pretty soon I'm going to um, move it into a pot. Scrub your outdoor furniture. You'd be surprised at how much dirt can accumulate on outdoor furniture, even if it's been in storage. Yeah, that's a really good idea. Um, outdoor furniture can get disgusting. And uh, I mean, but again, if you don't live in a place that allows you to have outdoor furniture, then it's really not for you. But you know, if you're in a, if you have a house or a deck or whatever, then yeah, wash it off with warm water. I mean, it gets icky. The outside is not a fun environment. The wind, the dirt, the air, the dust, um, bugs can get into it. I mean, make it fresh and make it feel good for you. So yeah, that is my video about, um, things that you could do in your home during this quarantine because what else are we supposed to do? Benefit, you could be home and you don't have to wear a mask while doing it. Benefit, it'll look great when it's done and you'll feel good. Benefit is feeling good. Um, negative, who wants to do it? Negative, it's gonna take time. Negative, it could be annoying. Negative, you don't like doing it. But a positive from that negative is what else are you gonna do? So that being said, thank you guys for watching my video. Hopefully you take some of these tips and tricks and incorporate it into your home because, you know, all we have is time and time is ticking regardless. So it may be good to do something beneficial with the time. Hopefully I'll take my own advice. Um, other than that, see you on the other side. Bye.